Okay, today we're going to do one more for version of a quadratic equation, and that's factored form. So we'll look at each of the three and kind of see the pros and cons of each. So if we look at each of these, the first thing we see is we have a number 1 out front. Right? There's a 1 in front of the x squared, or we have a 1 in front of the brackets, or we have a 1 in front of the brackets there. So they're all 1, so that's just like before. We say that means that it's going to open upwards, and it's going to be normal. It's not going to be skinny or wide. So just up, openings up, and that's it. The other key thing is we know in standard form that that negative 4 means that our y-intercept is going to be at 0, negative 4. So we know the location of our y-intercept. And that's all that this equation gives us. So standard form gives us y-intercept. Vertex form, we just learned in the last lesson that the vertex can be determined from those two numbers in the equation. So our vertex is going to be at opposite of that, so negative 1.5. And the same as the other one, so 6.25. So if we do that on our calculator, we can see that our vertex is going to be somewhere down there. So we have our vertex as negative 1.5 and negative 6.25. And that's it. So we know our graph is going to be the U-shaped graph looking something like that. So there's our graph. So standard form equation gave us the y-intercept. The vertex form equation gave us the vertex. And now we have one more new equation to look at, and that's factored form. And factored form, if you graph this one on the graph, you see it's also the exact same graph. So all three of these equations are exactly the same, just different ways of writing them. And what we do is if we find our x-intercepts, so our x-intercepts, if you do it off your calculator, go second calc 0 and figure out those. We see the first one here is at negative 4, and the second one's at positive 1. And if we look at our factored form, you can see that our factors give us those numbers just like they did with the vertex. But because they're both in brackets, because they're both in brackets, we have to do the opposite. So you got to do the opposite. So 1, 0, and negative 4, 0 ends up being our x-intercepts. So factored form, really good equation to figure out the x-intercepts. And that's all for today. Okay, so let's look at a couple more factored form equations. So let's suppose we have the equation minus 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 4. <clears throat> so factored form, <clears throat> Just like we did before, the minus 2 out front, all that's going to tell us is it's upside down and a little bit narrower. But the key ideas are the minus 3 and the minus 4. Those two values will be our x-intercepts. Our x-intercepts will be a plus 3 and negative 4. So we know that the graph's going to cross at negative 4, 0. And it's also going to cross at 3, 0. And we know it's going to be upside down, and that's it. So we know the graph is going to do something like that. We don't know how high it's going to go or and so on. We just know that it's going to be upside down. So the advantages of the factored form is we can see what the x-intercepts are, but we don't know much else. So you can see with all three equations, let's go back to the original, it's so all three equations. One of them gives you the y-intercept. One of them gives you the vertex. The other one gives you the x-intercepts. But... They're good in their own way, on their own, but none of them gives you the whole picture. So depending on the question, one is going to be better than the other, and so on. So the key thing to remember with factored form is just make sure you always do the opposite of whatever's in the brackets. Let's look at one more. Okay, so for this one, there's our equation minus x plus 2 times x plus 5. So we know that our x-intercepts will be at negative 2, and the other one will be at negative 5. And the only other thing we know is it's upside down, but that's it. So but as long as we're only looking for x-intercepts, it's a good, good form to use, and uh, that'll be it. So we'll stop there. You can do some practice questions on this stuff.